at the General Assembly at Occupy Wall Street and Liberty Plaza is a form of direct democracy, and it runs on modified consensus. <clears throat> direct democracy's oldest form was an Athenian democracy, Athenian direct democracy. Obviously, it was not very fair. Women, slaves, foreigners were not allowed to speak or participate. They were excluded from the entire process, but that's where it originated. The, another modern, or not modern, another ancient example would be the Roman Republic, where citizens had the power to enact, create, and um, put into work laws. That was the oldest example of citizens taking power into their own hands and creating the world for themselves. Um, modern movements that use direct democracy are the landless people of South Africa, the landless people's movement, there's also Students for Direct Democracy here in America, and there's also Change 2011, a Finnish political party. The way direct democracy works <clears throat> is it is everyone is heard, no voice above another. We bring people together and we discuss important decisions and dis discuss important topics, and everyone gets a chance to speak, and everyone, feel, and everyone gets to be heard, and it's a beautiful process. We, run on modified consent. What that means is that generally everyone is in agreement when we come to a decision. Sometimes they're not, and that's not a meaningful consensus. What we want and what we're hoping to achieve is an agreement by everyone. <clears throat> so that way everyone, no one is excluded and no one is stepped on. I'd like to review the process with you guys if I can. So this is like a facilitation training. What you can use these tools for is to go back to your communities and hold general assemblies in your own communities. These are empowering tools. They're really useful. They're not perfect. This process isn't perfect, but it's a good model to follow. And the more you do it, the more perfect it becomes. So let's start with the review of hand signals. There were three that were reviewed at that general assembly. One is this. This means I agree, or I feel good. I like where this is going. This means, I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence, I'm not really sure. This means, I disagree, I don't like this, I don't feel good. This is a point of process. This is a very important symbol. What this means is that process has been derailed. When someone is off topic, or someone is voicing a complaint during a proposal, or some other important act, point of process is thrown up. It doesn't mean yell point of process. You don't want to talk over people, and you don't want to cut anyone off. You just do this silently, let the facilitators see you, and then the point of process is enacted, and they'll be, and the process will be put back on track. This is point of information. This means I have pertinent information about what you are talking about. If someone says the march is at three, and you know that it's at two, raise your finger. Don't yell point of information, just raise your finger and let the facilitator see you and say, the march is actually at two. What this is not is a question, or a concern, or your own agenda. This is just information. This means, wrap it up. We understand what you're saying. Some of us may even agree with you, but you're going really long. Please be <laughs> concise and to the point. This is a block. A block is very severe. It means I have very harsh ethical problems or safety issues with what is being discussed. It means that if what is talking about goes through, I will leave. I will abandon the cause and give up on this movement. We don't want this to happen. We want to work out any blocks. Also, if someone throws up a block, they're asked to explain why, because it's very serious. We want to know why, absolutely, so that we can all come to agreement and be in consensus. So a block is very serious. Are there any questions about the hand signals? Can we review them? Can we review them? Yes. <laughs> I agree. I feel good. I'm on the fence. I don't know. I disagree. I don't feel good. Point of process. This means process has been derailed. Point of information. I have pertinent information about what you are discussing. Wrap it up. You're going really long. Please be concise and to the point. Block. I have severe ethical problems with what you are talking about and will leave this movement if what is being talked about goes through. Okay, so those are the hand signals. You guys may have noticed that we practice a thing called people's mic. It's a really, really awesome tool used to communicate with large crowds. 
The New York City NYPD will not let us have a megaphone or amplification devices, so we use people's mic to communicate. People's mic doesn't, echoing someone's voice doesn't mean agreement. It just means that you're echoing their voice so that they can be heard. That being said, people's mic is not, it's not meant to be abused. It's someone lending their voice to support yours. So if someone doesn't support your voice, that's their choice. That's their freedom to do so. But it's a great way to unify the movement, get everyone on the same page, and make sure that people are heard. Sorry, the sun is in my eyes, I'm gonna put on my glasses. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, we also practice a concept called step up, step back. This is a really important concept, and it's a beautiful concept. What it means is that, for example, I was born a white male. Because of the color of my skin and because of my gender, I've been given certain unfair advantages in my life. People have told me my entire life that what I have to say is important. And also that support has made me feel empowered to speak more often and louder. Some people have never been given that support. Some people have been silenced or oppressed their entire lives. So I step up to the responsibility that I've been empowered and then I step back and let other people who haven't been empowered have the chance to speak. It also means that if I've been speaking a lot, I'll step back and encourage people who haven't spoken a lot to step up. Okay. So on the facilitation team, there are a few different roles. The co-facilitators are the speakers of the facilitation team. They help run the GA. They're verbal components. If you're not comfortable speaking, there are plenty of supplementary roles on this, on this facilitation team that are really important too. Co-facilitators are generally man, woman, can be woman, woman. We prefer a mixture. I would, you know, we'd rather see it more diverse than less diverse. Another role is timekeeper. Timekeeper is a really important role. I know it sounds silly, but it really is. General assemblies can run for three hours or more if the timekeeper doesn't keep everyone in check. Things on the agenda are allotted a certain amount of time, and the timekeeper's job is to make sure that people are staying within those bounds. They don't interrupt people. They shouldn't be like, excuse me, your time is up. They just tap the facilitator on the shoulder, let them know that the person is running over time and the facilitator should handle it appropriately. Stack taker. Stack taker is very, very, very important. It allows everyone to speak in an orderly fashion instead of talking over each other or stepping on each other. A stack taker practices progressive stack. What progressive stack means is that on a list, Someone from a marginalized community or minority community may be moved to the top to ensure that those people are being heard and not the majority of people. Stack is a list. It's a list of people to speak in order. There is a stack for each portion of the agenda. And the stack taker should be stationary and say, I'm taking stack. I'm also practicing progressive stack. If you'd like to be on stack, raise your hand. I'll take down information about you and then I'll call on you when it's your turn to speak. It's really hard for a stack person when everyone is rushing through the crowd to come be on stack. It's better just to have them raise their hands from where they are, get on stack, and then speak from where they are, or slowly, quietly come to the front when it's their turn. Minutes are really important, too. They go on our website, nycga.cc or .net or .com. Apparently they're all the same. <laughs> The minutes allow transparency. They allow the world to see what we're talking about. You don't have to be absolutely precise, but if you're a fast typer, that's a plus. If you have a computer, double plus. That's awesome. But I've written no, I've taken minutes in the rain on paper with markers, and they've been put online. As long as those transcripts are being put online, that's fine. Um, there's other supplementary roles, like people's mics that are planted in the GA to ensure that voices are projected out. There's vibe checkers who occasionally stop a meeting during a critical point to see how people are feeling. We may take a break if people are being or feel run down or they feel oppressed. Vibe checks are these symbols to use to see how people are feeling. <clears throat> all right, so are there any questions about the roles of facilitators? Those are all of them. nycga.cc or .com or .net
Stand for. New York General Assembly. New York City. New York City General Assembly. <laughs> Just a question about people who are taking a step. Mm -hmm. When a person comes to speak, does anybody question the person just hey, what do you wanna what do you wanna talk about? Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> Did everyone hear that? No, okay. repeat it. <clears throat> When someone comes to be on stack, does the stack person question what they're going to be talking about? There are different points of the agenda for a GA, which I'll get into later. There's agenda items, work group checkbacks, and announcements. If the person coming up on stack wants to make an announcement during work group checkbacks, they're asked to wait until announcements. If it's a working group, they're allowed to speak during that time. Does that answer your question? Just because, uh... I was an organizer in the Israeli social movement and a lot of what happened was, was people would ask to speak and then would go off topic, you know, tell Obama, whatever. And then, <coughs> so we would lose a lot of time just getting people to get back. So during, if, if they come during announcements and they want to speak, they're going off topic or going over long, you throw up a point of process. You say, excuse me, when, when, when the facilitator calls on you, you say, excuse me, you're off topic, please stay on topic. If it's an announcement and they're going over long, you use this. We understand what you're saying. Please be concise and wrap it up. So that way, no one feels like they're being ignored or not being listened to. And at the end of a general assembly, we have the people's soapbox, which you guys may have witnessed over there. I'm sorry, you people may have witnessed over there. <clears throat> that is an opportunity for anyone who feels like they have a really important message or they have something that they really want to yell and yell at people. <laughs> to get up on the soapbox and allow people to echo them if they want to. People can stay, people can leave, it's their choice. All right, any other questions right now? We're gonna get into the actual process of a General Assembly. Okay, great. So the order of the GA, as I understand it, is you start with a review of process. That's the hand signals. That's also information about step up, step back. It's also intros of who's on the facilitation team. And at this point, the stack person should say that they're practicing progressive stack and how they run it. Then, we go into work group checkbacks, report backs. What this is, is for working groups who have already been established to come to the General Assembly and tell everyone what they've been working on, what they've accomplished, where they're going, or what they need. Working groups are not, I mean, working group report backs are not, hey, I'm starting a working group. That goes in announcements. After working group report backs, we have announcements. This is an opportunity for anyone who has any important information or would like to inform everyone about an event to come and get on stack and report that event or give that information. Announcements are not a time for someone to soapbox. That goes at the end. Following work group report backs and then announcements is the agenda. These are generally proposals, initiatives, or celebrity speakers, guest speakers. <clears throat> Excuse me. The way a proposal works is a working group develops a proposal, goes through it with a bunch of people a few times, refines it, makes it perfect, then they come to the facilitation team and they ask for the item to be on the agenda for the next General Assembly. They come up, they give the proposal, then the floor is open for friendly amendments. What friendly amendments are, are things that need to be tweaked about the proposal. They're not questions, they're not concerns, they're friendly amendments to make the proposal better and to make it apply to more people. After friendly amendments, sorry, the person giving the proposal should also keep track of the friendly amendments so that way they can either accept, reject them later. After friendly amendments, there's questions, comments, concerns. This is the time for people to voice concerns or to ask questions about the proposal. Only about the proposal, so that we can stay on topic. <clears throat> questions generally are answered by the person giving the proposal. If it's a complicated question, it's saved until the person giving the proposal either modifies with friendly amendments or retracts their proposal. So after um, friendly amendments and comments, so that's questions. We move for consensus. <clears throat> the way we gauge consensus is with a temperature check, and that's using these symbols. 
if everyone does this, that's a consensus. And the facilitators will move for any blocks. Like I said, blocks are severe ethical issues with what's being talked about. If there are any blocks, they're asked to come up and say why. If the block cannot be resolved or, rescind or isn't rescinded, then we have to move to a nine-tenths vote. We don't want to do this. We don't want to vote. We're fighting against a system that oppresses people like voting. Voting means that some people are ignored. They're completely forgotten about. So that way the majority can enact something. <clears throat> we don't want to do that. That doesn't make me feel good as a person. So we want consensus. The reason it's nine-tenths is because that's almost impossible to get. That's, a, that's an insurance policy to ensure that something that conflicts with the group isn't being put through. But on occasion, we have come to a vote for obvious reasons. <clears throat> okay. So that's how a proposal is put through. The only note that I have is that if, cons if, if, if it goes to consensus and you have a lot of this and a lot of this, or a mixture of those two, it's not a meaningful consensus. That means it can't go through. The person making the proposal has to table it, refine it, and bring it back. Are there any questions about proposals? It's a lot of information. And I know a lot of you aren't taking notes. <laughs> The question was, if he has a proposal and he's only been to a few general assemblies, what's the process he needs to go through to get his proposal on the agenda? Generally, proposals are from working groups that have already been established. If you are new, we encourage you to join a working group that applies to the proposal you have. Then, share that proposal with the working group. Come to a consensus about what it should be and how to propose it. If, you, if there's no working group that applies to your proposal, start a working group. You have that power as an individual to start whatever working group you want. Then, get a bunch of people together in that working group, develop your proposal, then bring it back to the facilitation team. John. So, it may be that the proposal, once it's put before whatever relevant working group, uh, once they hear it, it may be that that decision is appropriate to make only within that group. The working groups are encouraged to take autonomous action so that not all decisions go before the General Assembly so that things are not bogged down in that decision-making process. So generally, uh, large decisions that affect the whole occupation go to the General Assembly. That's a very good note. Did everyone hear that? <clears throat> Large decisions that affect the entire movement go to the General Assembly. <laughs> Working groups are empowered to do whatever they need to do to enact things and get things done within their own working group. Can you give me examples of stuff that, <coughs> you, that you would choose not to bring to the Assembly? So for example, uh, yeah. the marches are planned generally by the direct action working group. So they don't bring decisions like who is going to do the uh, be the march marshals and the guiders and things? Those decisions pertain directly to what direct action is going to do. So that's just one of many examples. Outreach is another example. We're not going to bring uh, the decision of uh, you know to print so many flyers out before the general assembly. It's just going to be something that outreach does. Uh, so those are just two examples, and there's numerous others. An example of something that should be brought to the General Assembly <clears throat> is the declaration of the occupation. That was a working group that started as a call to action working group. And later, they developed that declaration, and it was brought to the General Assembly over three times, I believe, before it was ever consensed upon. So it went through a very lengthy process of refinement. That's what this process is used for. Okay. Can Any ask, other questions? Yeah, can ask, there's actually a question about that. Because uh, the GA we're about to start in Jersey City, like I feel like that should be kind of one of our focuses, maybe as like an immediate goal, is to like come up with some sort of declaration that we can... And that's why I think the GA is useful, is that we can actually get that discussion going. I mean, 
how can we, I mean, like, should we even get to the extent of, like, actually start drafting it and sharing drafts with each other, like, and so people can, like, uh, I mean, like, actually, like, have documents uh, yes. that we can, like, working documents? Yes, it's very important, especially when you're trying to come to a consensus that everyone is informed. So, printing out drafts, having people make notes, bringing those all back together, coming up with a new draft is a really, really empowering and amazing way to do that process. <clears throat> Okay, so that's the review of proposals. <clears throat> After a general assembly, you formally close it. You can close it with a cheer, a chant, whatever you want to do, a dance, yoga, <laughs> meditation. It's all good. But you just close it and you let people know that you're starting the open forum or the people's soapbox. Let them know that they can choose to stay or go. They can do whatever they like. It's the, the General Assembly is formally closed, so the People's Soapbox is an opportunity for anyone to get up and just say whatever they want. I've actually been to a lot of People's Soapboxes because a lot of people have really amazing things to say, and I love to listen to it. I did one last night. It was awesome. Um, okay, so that's all of General Assembly, how it's run, the hand signals. Any questions, comments, concerns from any of you guys? Do you have the, do you feel empowered? Do you have I did have a question. How do general assemblies inter integrate with one another? Um, what did you say? How do general assemblies integrate with one another? And can you clarify what you how, mean? How do they work with each other? He's starting one in Jersey. This is the second one oh. in Manhattan. How do they interact? So a general assembly is location-based. So there will be a general assembly in New Jersey. There will be a general assembly here in New York. The occupations are networking not the General Assemblies. The General Assembly is just a tool used to make decisions for that occupation. Occupations network through a working group, I believe, called Internet. And the people on Internet team are responsible for connecting those occupations. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank cool. you. Cool, awesome. Any other questions right now? Yeah, there's one right there. Back. How do we find out when the next General Assembly is happening? General assemblies are every day at 7 p.m. at Liberty Plaza. That's the corner of Liberty and Broadway on Wall Street. At the information booth, are there not some, some handouts? Yes. And some... Also, all this information that I reviewed is on a nice printout at the information booth at the center of Liberty Plaza. Are you going to have a major event on October 15th? The question was, are we having another major event on October 15th? I do not know. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Information would know, maybe. Um, also, Direct Action would know, since they're probably planning it. I'm not part of either of those working groups. Okay. I wish I could answer. I'm sorry. Is there a central place we can go to get that kind of information? The information booth at Liberty Plaza is a centralized information center. They should have that information. Okay. Are there any questions about the direct web? democracy and this, this training process? Location for general assemblies, uh, maybe where you guys are doing it in Jersey. I don't know. I want to do one in my own neighborhood in Manhattan. Awesome. And obviously, these are outside, which provides a large amount of freedom. Do you have advice in terms of, or like feedback in terms of places to look for space, or any kind of advice regarding to like, I don't know, like if we go to the school, what does that mean, or in some other location? <clears throat> There's a lot of places in New York City that are um, co-ops, like artist spaces, um, spaces that are specifically uh, designated to the public, even. 60 Wall Street has an entire huge area that's, directed, or that's dedicated specifically to public meetings. Um, I would look for spaces like that. Generally, spaces not associated with private institutions that are profiting off people's education. Or <laughs> other or other businesses that do that. That's why we're kind of like in public. Yeah. Yeah. I just to kind of like feedback off that. I, I mean, I think it's that's crucially important is finding good public space, especially where people. There's like a natural flow of people. So people who might not even know what's going on can kind of like just sort of <coughs> stop by and see this is interesting, you know, and that might kind of draw them in. Where are you guys doing it? We, uh, yeah, at Grove Street. Uh, mm -hmm. It's right next to the PATH station on Grove Street. And it's this nice little park. It's really close to City Hall, too, which is convenient for yeah. any direct action. Um, 
but it's also great not only because it's a near a path station and the subway but it's also this little square is used for like farmers markets which is incredibly symbolic again for like utilizing public space and sort of like that's I think I mean that's it's a great it meshes well so places like that I think uh, are good awesome yeah just, just two comments one of them is that so having gone through this process of trying to import this mechanism of the assemblies to Israel we found that each community has a little bit of a different character and that things that work perfectly well in Madrid don't work that well in our poor neighborhoods and so it's up to you with a similar group that you come up with to try and translate it to something that works in your neighborhood and the process is really important but what's most important is that the thing works and everybody feels happy with it so that's one comment the other comment is that what we found out when we started it starts very quickly that people come up they do assemblies maybe they start uh, camps like occupations and they're not doing it just to look good or to feel like they're doing a lot of them are, are really in, in really harsh conditions and they want to change reality and so if the national movement if there's not a sense that they're contributing to to Wall Street or to the whole movement they won't show up again they show up once or twice if they make decisions they're not even conveyed to Wall Street and there's no so this is very important it's, I guess it's more maybe we were saying at this point it's still at the internet uh, working group or maybe in but we're going to have to be really conscious of that. They're not doing those meetings for fun. Yeah, yeah. How do facilitators deal with things that um, impede the, the, the flow of the discussion? Things like crosstalk, or if people are not speaking loud enough. I, I've seen this gesture sometimes for like, get up the volume. Um, in general, things that interrupt the, the process or other conversations. I've seen, you know, facilitators have to shut down private conversations that were pertinent to the discussion. Are there any, like, rules about that kind of stuff that you can talk about? I believe that it's the job of the facilitator to empower themselves to have some sort of authority. It is a leadership role, but you are not a leader. Also, it's really, really bad, and it looks bad, and it makes me feel bad when I see people being silenced, being told to stop talking and to go away. We encourage people to have side conversations on the side, outside of the ring. They can just go out there and talk as loud as they want because no one that way everyone can still hear. When someone's interrupting process, someone may throw up a point of process, the facilitator politely should ask them to please bring it to an announcement or talk about it on the side or ensure that they're heard in some other way, but now's not the time. It's a very delicate situation. And there's been instances in the past where people have felt disempowered or oppressed by the people facilitating because it wasn't handled very well or it wasn't handled delicately. So it's very important for a facilitator to not only project themselves as a little, as, as um, having a, a bit of empowerment and also a leader, but it's also important for them to recognize that they're not the leader right. and that they don't have direct power. Oh, I'm just a natural, natural guard. I'm excited to talk Okay. <laughs> I'm watching the police and the civilians. I'm the one person. Right. And for that, like to watch the police. So, so if somebody makes a proposal, says something, and it's controversial, and um, it, it, it elicits um, all sorts of um, uh, responses, does that person have the opportunity to keep responding infinitely to criticisms, or like, like how do you? Is it up to the facilitator to basically put an end to arguments like that and to say we got to move on? And, and I suppose it depends on the section that it's coming in. Are you talking about like a controversial proposal? Yeah, yeah, for example. <clears throat> a controversial proposal will usually be shut down pretty quick. And that's not the facilitator doing that. That's the entire General Assembly. If, if, it's, if, um, if the proposal's heard, which it should be, and people are like, oh no, they're like doing this already before they even ask for consensus, that's a pretty clear sign that it's probably not going to pass. So the General Assembly polices itself in that way. Point of information. So. It's, uh, if it's immediately controversial, the proposal, it's, it might be, it might mean that that proposal is not very well thought out. Maybe it was not talked about enough with the people that are organizing it, and what happens if, if discussion goes on and on and on, and usually there's a timekeeper to keep track of time, uh, the facilitator will gauge the gauge the assembly and see how long they want to allot for the proposal. If it 
gets to that limit and then gets extended and extended, what happens is the proposal can be tabled until uh, and the next assembly, so that the proposal can be thought well, more well thought out. The example that I have in my mind is just the discussion a few nights ago about the art gallery show, which was was contra somewhat controversial at least, and there was some difference of opinion about the six hundred and fifty dollars and that kind of thing. And there seemed to, it had the potential to kind of go on endlessly. And yeah. So I just wondered how if there's a certain techniques for dealing with those. Like I said, <clears throat> like I said earlier, the system isn't perfect. Yeah. But it gets more perfect, the more people participate, and the more general assemblies we have. Oh, yeah. Point of information about, and, okay, so about this process that we're describing, we've adapted over time, and so we've cut out some of the, some of the hand signals that have made the process inefficient. Um, so, it's good to keep that in mind so that you know that this is not a static thing. Just like the movement is not static, it's, it started very small. It's an evolving thing, and so is the way that we make decisions. Um, I have a question kind of along the same lines about um, stopping the process. I, like, I think it was last Sunday at General Assembly, like somebody climbed the tree, and then there was like police issue on the street, and someone was like getting chainsawed or something, and the, the, it kept going, and there was this amazing dedication to the process. It was like, that's fine, we're here, let's continue, which I was surprised. I mean, I was impressed, I suppose, but are there, is it completely up to the facilitator? Is there kind of notions you all have discussed about when when it would be appropriate to say, okay, let's take a break here, like, you know, the police are cutting somebody out of their bike chain or I don't know. There's been instances where um, there's been some controversy or people feel oppressed or disempowered by someone speaking, at that point someone would do a vibes check and ask how the General Assembly feels. If people don't feel good, you don't want to continue. You want to take a break, like five, ten minutes, maybe three, four minutes, depending on how bad people feel. Sometimes they'll just ask to keep going, you know, they just want to keep going and get it done. Uh, my question is how do you choose the facilitators and who's going to play each role from each General Assembly? We don't choose. People usually step up and say, I want to help. Oh. So, Day, to answer that question, each day there's a facilitator uh, working group meeting, and in those meetings the proposals are discussed that the working groups bring forward, as well a frequent agenda item on the, the facilitator working group meeting agenda is to choose the roles of the facilitators that night. It usually happens by uh, volunteer, and we encourage, that meeting is completely open to everyone. Like last night, there was an experienced facilitator and someone else that had never done it before. So there's kind of that, uh, the, the roles are selected in that meeting each day. No, of course, go ahead. I, thank you. Um, I know when you guys put yourself, or when we put ourselves out there as facilitators, um, then people come and they come to you with questions. And it's happened a couple of times, even not even, I'm not a facilitator, but because I'm loud, people come to me and they ask me things, and I don't know the right, like I don't know the information to tell them. I want to learn too. How do we know where to direct people when they come to us with, with questions, specific questions? For example, someone came to me today, he's from Florida, they're starting a GA in Fort Lauderdale, he has really great <coughs> ideas about direct action. I don't. I didn't know the people. I just could say, "I'll help you look for the sign for direct action." Is there a more efficient way that we can connect people from the you know that may not be at the general assemblies but have yeah, want to want have questions? Anyone Does that make sense? Answer this. Make the circle. Don't let the circle. So information flow seemed like the the concern that was most paramount last night. Last night, the General Assembly broke out into, into groups and discussed uh, transparency, including financial decisions, decision-making in general, and how to plug people in. Okay. in. When the groups came back together, they selected a representative to share their thoughts. And information flow and availability was the most important, the most um, commonly cited thing, concern, issue. What I would say to you is that that person 
right now the most efficient uh, uh, avenue is to point them right to the info desk, which is right in the middle of the park. As and then will as the internet comes develop develops more, the information will become more available. Okay. On the site itself. On the site itself. Yes. Have you ever eliminated the counter? So the question was, <clears throat> have we eliminated direct response? Answer, yes. <laughs> this was a severely abused symbol used by a lot of people to push their own agenda or to ask questions at an inappropriate time. So instead we used point of information, which was originally what this was meant to be, just information. But it was abused, so we use this now. Sir. Oh, I just wanted to follow up on this question. Um, do you have anything? That means <laughs> Do you have any way to try and avoid having the same people play the same roles in the facilitation process over and over again? Because I used to be part of a collective where it used to be like the same guy would facilitate every time just because everyone expected him to. And that became kind of a problem sometimes. But, uh, to answer that, that's what this is for. We're training all of you. You are now all trained facilitators and can come to our facilitation meetings and help facilitate. I'd encourage you to do that. I also encourage you to join a working group, help facilitate their meetings if they would like you to. Because you have facilitation training now. Some people in the working groups don't necessarily have that training. So it helps to keep things organized. You don't have to use the strict facilitation that we've taught today. A loose facilitation like what we're using now is perfectly fine. And then also, if you want to be part of the facilitation team, please consider taking on a supplementary role first. Like staff, time, minutes, those are all awesome ways to be involved and learn the process after being there a few times, and then you can take on the speaking role. Of course you can take on the speaking role at any time you want. I've done it once, it was pretty cool, but I don't like to do it. <laughs> are there... yes? When and where are the facilitation meetings so Facilitation meetings are at 4 o'clock at the bottom of Liberty, Liberty Plaza, Liberty Square. By the drum. Yeah, more or less at the stairs. The stairs where the are? Yes, and we as the the numbers of people have increased, we've decided for volume concerns, for noise concerns, we move off site at that time. So we collect the group of people there at four o'clock and then we move off site to a quieter place. Um, it's disrupted today because of this thing. Um, so the general assembly will be held at seven and I don't know exactly what is going to be what's going to happen in the General Assembly tonight. I'm sure someone has taken on the reins, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> also, <coughs> there's facilitation training every day at 5.30 at the back step, same location. We might, we may move, but we'll meet there first at 5.30. If you know anyone who's interested in learning how to facilitate, please direct them there. That's at Liberty Plaza, back steps, 5.30 every day. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but generally we try to make it happen every day. I've led a few. And that's one meeting like this one here. Yes, yes. meeting like this At the back steps of Liberty Plaza. It's by the, like the, the drum circle. by the drum circle. And isn't there a bronze man statue? Yeah, yeah, and by the bronze man statue. What about the working group meetings? How do we locate that? There should be a schedule at info for their meetings. I know that we're still nailing down specific times that or it would happen every day or like once a week or something. But that information should be at info. Yes? Is the different kinds of working groups, are you posting them on the internet so that we can see that they're posted? We're working on getting our NYCGA website updated with all of the working groups. There's new ones forming every day. What we've been doing is posting minutes from their meetings on that website. So that way you, it's transparent, you know what they've been talking about, what they've been doing, and you can get directly involved and get right into the mix of things with the working group. Does that answer that question? Yeah. All right. Yes. I was going to say about working groups, I noticed that uh, if you start following um, their minutes and certain information, a lot of them have forums. Yes. That you can then jump over to and find out a lot about what's going on for like arts and culture. Mm -hmm. There was a poetry reading thrown together last night very quickly by using that, so that's another way. You can easily follow them to their forums. They usually give you a hyperlink or something. Awesome. Perfect. All right, guys. Thank you. This guys. has been amazing. <laughs> Thank you all so much Thank for doing you. this.
paper going around to put your information down. A name and a phone number would be great, so that way I can send you a text to let you know when our next meeting is. It's every day at four, but if we... Yeah, there you go. Right there. <laughs> and also, if you're bringing this back to your community, please reach out to us. If you have any questions, need any more information or anything, we have a lot of resources at our disposal that we can help you with. Okay? Thank you guys so much.